It's part two of the week four preview here on the Audible. Cecil Lammy, Sigmund Bloom, two Monday night games. Bloom, we'll get to that a little bit later. Jacksonville, Houston. I mean, Jacksonville side, not much confidence for a fantasy lens. So maybe we just skip to the Houston side and talk about, well, those guys need a little bit more confidence and a little bit more than Joe Mixon, which isn't going to happen. Looks like Damian Pierce will be the lead back this week. Yeah, I think when we look at Jacksonville, you know, playing for Peterson's job this week, uh, but you're Ooh. not going to put Trevor Lawrence in. You're not going to put in Brian Thomas Jr. I mean, this is going to be a matchup for him probably with Derek Stingley, maybe Christian Kirk, because at least we saw last week when the Jags offense is struggling, then you're going to see more Kirk. We're not going to see Evan Ingram, I don't think, back this week. Travis Etienne, they are making the lead back. So he's at least a flex play uh, on the Houston side. You want to see CJ Stroud and this passing game get rolling. Uh, Jacksonville certainly is a team that's circling the wagons as far as their effort on both sides of the ball at this point. So again, this last stand, Ryan Nielsen's defense hasn't been as much of the problem as the offense. Uh, doesn't sound like we're going to see Tank Dell. So that makes it easier to play Nico Collins, makes it easier to play Stefan Diggs. Like you said, see expecting Damian Pierce to be back. Cam Akers will probably still play a role. I'm not sure if Pierce is going to really be 100%. Uh, so I think when I look at this matchup, Cease, the main thing that I, I, comes out of it for me is, oh, the AFC South is bad again. They Remember like six months ago, this is the most exciting division for young quarterback play in the league. Well, it's exciting if a team can win nine games and go to the playoffs in this division this year. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jaden Daniels exciting. Washington, Arizona up next. And the Washington side gets you more confidence, especially after what Jaden did last week. No Austin Eckler, just more Brian Robinson, Bloom. Yeah, Austin Eckler looking good. I think everybody in that showcase for Jaden Daniels, people also saw, oh, it was the injury. Austin Eckler still looks as good as when he was going in the top five mm -hmm. of fantasy drafts. He doesn't have the role, and he's going to be out with a concussion, didn't travel with the team, so it is a Brian Robinson week. Jaden Daniels, I think the only quarterback we're surely starting over him at this point is Josh Allen and maybe Lamar Jackson. So if you got Jaden Daniels, you're really excited about that. And it was just really fun to see somebody capture the imagination of the entire NFL audience and give us something to look forward to. And may he have good health and may Washington and Cliff Kingsbury and the coaching staff there continue to meet him halfway season. Cause I don't think we've seen a quarterback, a rookie quarterback in the preseason override the play call, just do his thing. He's not a yes, sir, mm -hmm. no, sir guy. It's his team. And it's a good thing that it's his team. And it's a good thing if you have him on your fantasy team. And it's a good thing if you have Terry McLaurin. Because now you can see those bucket accuracy, deep throws. You're not going to put Terry McLaurin on the bench in this one for sure. Uh, and Washington, this is an exciting team right now, reminiscent of Robert Griffin III and his rookie year. But let's just hope it doesn't turn out the way the Griffin story turned out. Yeah, and uh, Cliff Kingsbury revenge game or Kyler Murray revenge game, <laughs> if we talk about the Cardinals in this. Well, I don't know that Kyler's looking for revenge on anybody because he seems to be relaxed and happy and Cliff took his journey and now he has a quarterback that maybe all along was the quarterback he was looking for and not Kyler Murray. But this is such a great matchup for Kyler Murray. He's definitely a top five quarterback this week against that Washington pass defense. Let's remember the Cincinnati pass offense also got off the schneid with T Higgins back, but against the Washington pass defense that we know is very beatable. So in addition to Marvin Harrison Jr., you're looking at Greg Dortch as a what the heck flex, Michael Wilson as a what the heck flex, Trey McBride probably out with a concussion this week. You're going to play James Conner. Is it going to be a bounce back game for this running game? Because again, I think that where you're going to attack this Washington defense is through the air with Kyler Murray. This should be an extremely entertaining game. Extremely entertaining. And then our next game, not as much. <laughs> no. New England and San Francisco. So let's kind of... Ramondre Stevenson, you're still going to have faith in, right? Yeah. But San Francisco is going to go... We're going to put them a turtle on their back. We're going to take Ramondre Stevenson away. At least they're going to try. And the 49ers side is much more exciting. But let's talk about this game. I think we can probably sure. combine them because after Stevenson, what do we really talk right. about with new England? Maybe pop Douglas after he got seven catches last week. You wonder if that's going to be the way they try to move the ball. Because like you said, Steve sees, I think you oversell the takeaway Ramondre Stevenson. You get up by a couple of scores and Stevenson, he's a, what the heck flex or a flex, a boom bust flex as Antonio Gibson. And you anticipated this. Cease. Antonio Gibson is playing well. 
and you want to continue to mix in Antonio Gibson, even though when the game script is a winning game script for New England, you're going to get a lot of Ramondre Stevenson. We're not going to get that game script in this one. And it is kind of a paradox where the worse the offense looks, the more people are going to want Drake May in there, but the worse the offense right. is playing, the less you want to put him in there and subject him to that. So there's a tension there, and we're going to see how that tension works itself out. And of course, there's the whack-a-mole tight end there with Hunter Henry. You never know. Brock Purdy played really well last week. Brock Purdy played well in a loss. Juwan Jennings played well in a loss. And I would have Juwan Jennings and Brandon Ayuk roughly equal this week. Both wide receiver three, wide receiver two type plays. Remember, Ayuk is going to see Christian Gonzalez in this one. And you know the trust is there. George Kittle should be back also. So, of course, he's in your lineup, even though that's a boom-bust play. Uh, the bottom line here is going to be, again, a lot of Jordan Mason. And Jordan Mason's ending up being one of the best picks in fantasy drafts as Christian McCaffrey is now going to Germany for some help. I don't know how much we're going to find help in Germany for our fantasy teams. I know we're finding help if we have Jordan Mason. Yeah. Hey, we got viewers in Germany. What's up, Ralph? And yeah. others out there as well. So, and Christian McCaffrey will be back this season. At least that's what reports say. Cleveland and the Raiders. So is this the week to trust your Browns because they're playing the Ravens uh, or Raiders, excuse me, Raiders. Um, and also Jerome Ford, a little bit banged up yeah. some more. Dante Foreman out touched him last week. Probably going to happen again this week. Bloom. I call this one the identity crisis bowl. I think both of these teams are adrift right now. And we'll see if they just look like two teams that are adrift and headed for top six, top eight draft picks, or if one of them can get the ship right here, right? Uh, Max Crosby's a little banged up too. I would imagine if he plays, assuming he does, he will introduce himself to Deshaun Watson a lot in this game. Remember, the Browns had three injuries on the offensive line last week, and they were already in a bad state. So as you said, Ford's banged up. Uh, Pierre Strong is banged up. Dante Foreman, they went to a couple weeks ago and didn't go as much last week, but I don't think it matters. There's not going to be much of a running game here. So I guess you can throw in Amari Cooper or Jerry Judy as a what the heck flex just because you know that Deshaun Watson going to have to pass a lot. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jameis Winston either via injury or because this game gets out of hand because the Browns are a legit bad team. The Raiders have been a legit bad team, then a legit good team, then a legit bad team. Antonio Pierce is shaking things up. Is that really where you want to be going into week four? Shaking things up? Trying to figure out who fits in and who doesn't? Because that was kind of what the interim coach part was for last year. So what are we going to see? Are we going to see this team respond? Or are we going to see that Antonio Pierce doesn't really have them on the same page? That being said, it's the Browns. They're going to stop the run. So Gardner Minshew is a quarterback to super flex play. And he why? Because he has Brock Bowers. He's in your lineup. Devontae Adams. He's probably in your lineup. Jacoby Myers, who's a very, very good player, and Trey Tucker, who had a strong game last week, and he can also get it done in the deep passing game. So this could be a game where Gardner Minshew revives the passing game, revives his destiny as the quarterback for this team, revives this team as at the very least a tough out week in, week out. Notice I didn't mention Zamir White. Uh, or this could be a game that shows, because remember, Antonio Pierce left open that Aiden O'Connell could start this week and then shut it down. But that shows you where this team is at. So much like Jacksonville, let's see how they respond to this one. It could be anything from one team is good and one team is bad to both teams are terrible. Four games down, four games to go. We're going to put What the Heck Flex on Twitter this week. So make sure to stay tuned to both of us at Sigmund Bloom and at Cecil Lammy at The Audible on Twitter. We'll have our What the Heck Flex is out on a tight schedule in West Virginia. Not in a tent today, though, Bloom. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the Wi-Fi, knock on wood. Our dude, uh, uh, Zach Law, said what's, what happens in the tent stays in the tent. What's up, Zach? Oh, that's right. That's right. What happens with KC and the Chargers? Well, we're going to see it. Uh, with Kansas City, fantasy GMs are just like, okay, Travis Kelsey, can you do more? And, of course, you're loving what you're getting from Pat Mahomes and those weapons, including Xavier Worthy and Roshi Rice. Yeah, unfortunately for fantasy, it seems like Kansas City is going to do what they need to do to win and not more. So and that's it. They're pacing themselves. So Roshi Rice absolutely is in, but we're not seeing them take chances downfield with Xavier Worthy and Worthy isn't playing in a way that makes you think they should be. Travis Kelsey not doing much. Uh, we're starting to get to the point with guys like Kelsey and Mark Andrews. 
tough decisions if you're going to go with a, a Tyler Conklin or somebody that at least has some momentum where Travis Kelsey doesn't have any right now. And the problem here is uh, also they like Carson Steele. I think Carson Steele is a good play this week. I would expect Carson Steele to get 20 touches, get a chance at a touchdown or two. And otherwise, doesn't Carson Steele fit right in a, a game plan for a team that says, we're going to do what we need to to win the game, but we're not going to extend ourselves. We're not going to leave ourselves vulnerable to turnovers that can change a game. We're going to play it safe. And why wouldn't they play it safe against a very weakened Chargers team this week? A weekend Chargers team that's going to try to out-physical him still. And yeah. with a banged-up Justin Herbert, you just keep Pat Mahomes cold on the sidelines by running the ball. Sounds like a Jim Harbaugh wet dream. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, um, but I think that instead it's going to be more like a desert when you have both of the offensive tackles out. And you have a team that is going to, like you said, Cease, be basically one-dimensional. I know Justin Herbert says he feels better. They have a bye next week. Why wouldn't you rest him? Well, it's Jim Harbaugh. But the Kansas City defense looks like a good play this week. J.K. Dobbins, you probably play at least as a flex play because he's going to get 15 to 20 touches. Remember, it's his backfield now. Even though his fantasy points were down in week three, the share of the backfield was way up. If you want to dig deep for a what-the-heck flex, I suppose you would look at like McConkey or Qu Quentin Johnston. And let's remember this Quentin Johnston story is about seeing what a player can do and having him do that and building his confidence. That's what the Harbaugh regime has done that the Staley regime did not. So an upset may be brewing if the Chargers can hang in there and maybe the Chiefs will let them hang around because they are taking their time, slow, deliberate. They're the tortoise and the hare in a way, but in the end, it feels like they're going to win the race. Yeah, they're going to win this race. Uh, Buffalo and Baltimore. This would be nice if Baltimore would show up in this one. <laughs> Because Buffalo's rolling, um, they seem ferocious, they seem intent. Like, we don't – what did Josh Allen say? Like, we don't need anybody. We don't have to worry about anyone worried about stats. Yeah. yeah. Except for fantasy gyms worried about right. their stats. Right. He didn't have to say Stephon Diggs' name, right? Uh, this is a wonderful showdown. Uh, Cease, I was saying yesterday that Burrow, Allen, Jackson – very reminiscent of the Roethlisberger, Manning, Brady days on the AFC side. And this is a wonderful showdown to have on Sunday night. Uh, everything is clicking. Josh Allen playing point guard. Baltimore's pass defense is bad. So you expect a big passing day. Khalil Shakir must play. Keon Coleman, Curtis Samuel coming around. These guys are what the heck flexes. Dalton Kincaid. This could be a big game for him. I think there's a potential shootout here. And of course, James Cook is rolling. So James Cook has got to be in your lineup. So yes, it's a spread it around offense, but against a bad pass defense and against an offense in Baltimore's offense that can turn this into a high scoring game. You're pretty excited about the ceiling possibilities for Buffalo. Uh, and like you said, Cease, will Baltimore's offense show up and make this a shootout? Yeah. And what will Mark Andrews do? What will Derrick Henry do? What will Lamar Jackson do? This one's at home. Things are setting up where you, I'm not want to say must win in week four, but yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's go Baltimore. Well, you got to at least be credible because this team, even after dominating the Dallas Cowboys for a half, almost ended up 0-3. All right? No bueno. Uh, but it's Lamar Jackson that put, Lamar, put the offense on Lamar Jackson's shoulders. A lot of injuries on the offensive line for this one. This is similar to Cleveland where Baltimore was just trying to get their offensive line figured out. Now everybody's banged up. The center's banged up. The new right guard, uh, right tackle's banged up. The new left guard's banged up. So that's not good against the Buffalo defense that you know had a few injuries of their own, lost their best linebacker. But still, this is a defense that is feeling themselves right now. So I think that it's not a Derrick Henry game script. Maybe it's more of a Justice Hill game script, to be honest, if they're playing from behind. I do think you're trying to get Andrews going, trying to get likely going but at the expense of maybe the running game will the game script even allow them to try to get the running game established that's why you're looking to those tight ends maybe to have a stronger game than they've had in previous weeks and then you want to get Zay flowers going downfield but to get Zay flowers going downfield you need to create some time i don't know if this pass blocking offensive line can do that so for baltimore yeah you want to show how you measure up to buffalo but maybe Later on in the season when the offensive line's healthier and the offense is more settled. Yeah, two games to go. And, I mean, Tennessee-Miami? <laughs> Do we have to, Bloom, on Monday night? Yeah. 
Seriously? And Miami may be going with Tyler Huntley, yes, instead of Tim Boyle? Yeah. Is that what we're learning right now? Like, uh, yeah, it's not great, Bob. So let's just combine this one, again, a little bit abbreviated today. Yeah. Because the... We would have got away with it had it not been for those crafty Broncos. But Titans and Dolphins on Monday night, you're not really looking to start many of these guys. Yeah, this is a, a terrible matchup, honestly, for in terms of football. Because I think for Tennessee, it's going to be simple. Will Levis, don't lose this game for us. That's all he has to do is just don't lose the game. So a lot of Tony Pollard, you like Ty J. Spears as what the heck flex. One of DeAndre Hopkins or Calvin Ridley could come through here. Probably not uh, both. Maybe neither because Tennessee also likes to throw to the tight end. And again, you're going to tell Will Levis, don't blow it. Uh, whether it's Boyle or uh, Huntley, play the Tennessee defense. Devin A. Chance still in your lineup. I guess you have to go with Tyree Kill. Had Pat Doherty on the couch this week, and he said, well, don't you think Mike McDaniel is going to go down swinging with Ty Lee, Tyree Kill? Manufacture touches. Do something to try to get him to influence this game. So I guess you put Tyree Kill back in your lineup, but with low expectations. Because in Jalen Waddle, just plain low expectations. Miami, just plain low expectations. Really, you're wondering if this season will be lost by the time that Tua Tag Tungavailoa is back. And if it is, are you risking him or how is this season going to go? See, so I think the Miami season three weeks in, you can see just how much, just how bad things can turn for a team just simply by losing their quarterback. Now they look like one of the worst two or three teams in the league. Final game, Seattle and Detroit. This one's a much better game, Bloom. Uh, so Monday night, we get to finish with a little bit more enthusiasm. Let's talk Seattle first. Yeah, Seattle. Remember, this team uh, it has an offense. Ryan Grubb, the new offensive coordinator, is willing to go pass heavy or run heavy, depending on the game, the opponent. And these teams have played each of the last three years. The lowest scoring matchup was 37-31. That was the lowest scoring matchup. The games have actually averaged 80 point three points or something like that so you love this one for fantasy although you know there's some maybe defense on the rise here uh on the seattle side it seems like a high volume geno smith game remember we saw when seattle went to new england earlier this year the run game wasn't working so we saw geno air it out and why wouldn't you when you have dk metcalf jackson smith and jigba i think that you have to at least put him in on the hope of a ceiling game tyler lockett what the heck flex noah fant a what the heck tight end, because again, if we expect it's possible, and of course, I don't think we're going to see Ken Walker. Uh, I think it's going to be another Charbonnet game, maybe lower expectations, but he has to be in your lineup as they're showing they're willing to put it all on his shoulders when Walker is out. But we do think that this will trend towards a high scoring game, trend towards a pass heavy game for Seattle. So keep that in mind when you're setting your lineups. Keep it in mind. Keep your Lions in mind, Bloom. I'm surprised you're not wearing your Lions gear today. Well, you know, I, I think. We're thinking more about the Tigers right now, trying to make it to the playoffs. Uh, they can just win. Look at you with the baseball reference. Uh, Andrew Mason right. would get that. I have no idea. Tigers doing good, Mace? Yeah? Oh, they're one of the greatest turnarounds of all time over the last several weeks. One of the Special greatest guess. turnarounds of all time. See, I just parrot what Mace yeah. says about baseball. I totally know baseball. It's one of the greatest turnarounds ever. Cease, you got to add to the description <laughs> with special guest Andrew Mason. This special week. guest Andrew Mason, yes. Yeah, thanks, Mace. Uh, what's up, man? So, you know, on the Detroit side, establish the run. I, I think Detroit has found their recipe. And much to the chagrin, if you have the passing parts of this offense, because I think you're going to see a ton of David Montgomery, a lot of Jameer Gibbs. You will see enough Amon Ross St. Brown to move the sticks to have him as a worthy play. Jamison Williams may be settling in as a boom bust play. Certainly when he's playing those corners, the long, fast, physical corners of Seattle. Why are you going to take chances with that? Jamison Williams was at the Tigers game yesterday, by the way. They were showing him on camera. Uh, so Jamison Williams knows about the Tigers, but maybe doesn't know about having a big game this week against those Seattle corners. Sam Laporta, we're going to see if he's back. If not, we'll see Brock right in there as a what the heck tight end. But again, I would say that the order for the Lions is to run the ball, control the clock, and they can stop the run. So uh, a little different recipe than what we've seen in previous years, but the Lions are still finding ways to win. Check out Twitter for What the Heck Flex this week. He's Sigmund Bloom. I'm C. Salami. We are the Audible. Thanks for watching, everybody. Watch these other videos. Stay tuned and stay frosty. <laughs>